Welcome to February's Leak Code Challenge. Today's problem is arithmetic slices. A sequence of numbers is called arithmetic if it consists of at least three elements and if the difference between any two consecutive elements is the same. For example, if we had 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, this would be an arithmetic sequence because the difference between all these numbers is 2 and it's at least a length of 3. This one is not because there's no pattern to it. 1, 1, 2, 5, 7, all of them differ in terms of how um, many there are in differences. So luckily we don't need to worry about consecutive as in skipping indexes. They need to be next to each other. So that's going to make our life much easier. Uh, but the tricky part here is say that we had 1, 2, 3, 4. We can see that we actually have three arithmetic sequences. We have 1, 2, 3, we have 2, 3, 4, but 1, 2, 3, 4 would also count. So this could kind of build upon each other if they have the same sequences in order. All right, so if we say had an example like uh, 1, 2, 3, let's say 4, 6, 8, how many sequences are there in here? Well, one of the first key things you need to think about is that we don't actually care about what these numbers are. What we care about is what are the differences between this index and the one previous. So here we can see the difference is one, we have one, again one, and here it starts out with two, two. Right, so this is like the differences between this index number and the one previous to it. Now, do you notice anything here? Um, well, we can see that one, two, three is a sequence, right? If we have the same sequence happening in order, we can already say, yes, there's gonna be one, at least one subsequence here, or one arithmetic sequence. Now, if we find that the next one is also the same, we would have to add another one, right? So that'd be two, but it's actually not two. This would be three. So what we're actually gonna have to do is add two to this, making that a three. Uh, here, we can see that two is different, so we don't actually add anything here, so it keeps at three. Uh, but now we see that at this point, the previous one is one, so we actually have to add at least one more, so it becomes a four. So the tricky part here is when we see that it is the same and it continues to be the same, we add, first we add one, then we add a two, then we add three, then we add four, and that continues on if, if this number is the same always. If it starts to differ, then we start over, and then we start at one again. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna create a DP array, measuring the differences between these index numbers, and just check to see, starting at the second position, if the previous one is the same. And if it is, we will count up our, up, um, our result. And if the next one is also the same, we'll add one more as well. We'll keep track of like some sort of variable to say we're, we have to add more than one. Okay, so let's see. Let's first initialize some variables, length of n, and I'm gonna create a DP array. And at first it's just gonna have none. And what we'll do is multiply it by n minus one. Now for i in range of one to, let's see, n, what do we want to do? We want to fill up our DP array, right? So the DP array is simply DP, uh, it'll be I minus one equals literally A I minus A I minus one. Now we have our DP array and we have to keep track of first our output, we'll start with zero and some sort of not multiplier, but I guess a tracker. I'm just gonna call it M and this will start with one. So we'll say for I in range of one through the length of dp, uh, what do we want to do? We want to first check to see if the previous one is the same, right? So if dp.i equals dp.i minus one, then we want to increase our output by, uh, we'll go like plus equals m. And we'll also need to increase our m here in case uh, the next one is the same as well. If it's not though, then we want to restart our M. We want to say, okay, M, uh, make that equal to back to one. So we can start over. And after that, we can just return our output. Let's make sure this works. This should return three. Um, if we add a couple more, let's see if I had my example six of eight. Let's see what that returns. Oops. So this would be four. Okay, so it looks like it's working. Let's go ahead and submit that. And there we go, accepted. So this would be O of n time, uh, but we do use O of n space. Now, there are ways that you can avoid that. You could use constant space, not having to create this DP array by keeping track of the previous ones. Um, but I wanted to illustrate it like this because I think it's uh, more understandable. 
Uh, if you want to dive into how you could use constant space, you could kind of play around with it, but I don't really feel like it today. Um, just don't feel like optimizing. So whatever, it works. All right, thanks for watching my channel. And remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.